The Red Dirt D&D Podcast is brought to you by Pro Laser Cuts. The Oklahoma company provides pre-made and customizable design laser cut dice towers, tokens, and more developed by a gamer for gamers and now available to enhance your tabletop game. Pro Laser Cuts products can be found at many Oklahoma City area game stores, local events, and now available online at ProLaserCuts.com. That's laser and cuts with a Z, Pro Laser Cuts. And by SD Way Gaming, where dice goblins unite. Our friends at SD Way Gaming celebrate the beautiful dice players handpick for their games and splendor. SD Way Gaming has expanded to include many tabletop gaming varieties, accessories, and similar fun necessities to include a service for your dice addiction. You can shop for a variety of products at sdwaygaming.com or find SD Way Gaming on Facebook. Welcome to Red Dirt d and I'm Michael Cross, and I play Gaz, an orc barbarian in search of adventure. I'm Connor Schnold. I play Connor with a K, a kobold sorcerer who is a continuous thorn in the Empire's side. I'm Johnny Payne, and I play the half-elf roguish warlock, Zonimus Dinar, who's going to take back everything he's ever lost. I'm Kiri Hester, and I play Poppy Tealeaf, a halfling druid who is determined to protect the frontier from the mat of the Empire. I'm Brooke Bullock, and I play Mockerin Stone Shaper, a young dwarf sorcerer finding his true family as revealed by the secrets of the frontier. And I'm Ash King, your dungeon master. Join us now for Tales from the Callbend Frontier. Along the southwestern shore of the Lake of Tears, there is a mine. The mine is ancient. The mine has laid silent for 5,000 years. But now, life has returned. Amidst the drips of condensation and the quiet crackles of stone falling in deeper areas. The sounds of battle have begun to echo throughout the mines. After having dealt with several different challenges, you all find yourself headed into one of the southern chambers of the mine. And Gaz, having walked into this chamber, you find yourself between two stone statues that as you have stepped into this room a light has appeared in the eye sockets and they have reached down to pick up these massive stone sledgehammers and they have turned seemingly responding to your presence at this point I do think it would be appropriate for everyone to go ahead and roll initiative for me. Brooke and Connor, how are you guys looking health-wise? I'm no. doing good. I'm doing great. Untouched so far. Zani. 18. Connor. 8. Gaz. 12. Makron. 14. And Poppy. Also 18. Johnny, what's your dex? My dex bonus is 4. Okay, mine is only 3, so it'll go Zani okay. then Poppy. All right. My... Stone golems are going to go first. So Gaz, obviously you have kind of been at the front of the party, have been acting as our somewhat kind of de facto leader. You kind of reached about the middle of this chamber before the golems began to activate. And this chamber itself, it's about 30 feet wide by 40 feet long. As far as our marching order, I know Zonimus, you had stealthed with, I believe it, what was it, a 20? Yeah, we'll go 20. Okay. Where would you kind of have been? Will you have been following Gaz a little more, hugging the wall? Yeah, I was staying up with Gaz, but behind him. And then as far as the rest of our marching order, where does everyone want to be? I would have been as close to Zonimus as I could be, even though I can't see him because he's Batman. Okay. Mokrin? Mokrin's okay with staying at the rear like earlier, if that's okay. Connor? Yeah, I'll be back with Mokrin. Okay, I'm going to have them do a quick perception check to see if they spot Zonimus. Neither of them spot Zonimus, so you're the only one who will not be targeted by this effect. I need... Everyone give me one wisdom saving throw, and then we'll do a second one. 
but not me. Oh, the, yeah, Zonimus, you're the only one because they did not okay. they did not spot you. I gave them a perception check to try, but neither of them saw you. Well, what did we all get? I got a 19. 19, okay. Got a 10. Mokrin's first roll is a modified three. Three, good job, kid. I got a 12, which for a person with a plus nine to their save. The only person who will have to give me a second saving throw will be Connor. Because Connor, you passed the first one. It's only a 14. So these creatures have cast slow on everybody. Oh no. Yes, so on a failed save, the targets cannot use reactions, speed is halved, and you can't make more than one attack per turn. In addition, the target can either take an action or a bonus action on their turn, not both. Oh. Yeah. So these effects will last for the next minute. You can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of your turns, ending the effect on a success. So there is hope that you guys can save out of that. But that was my golem's turn. That will bring us to Zonimus. You are currently the only person who's not slowed. I'm going to move up and go from behind Gaz to beside him and then put a little bit of distance between us. Probably not full movement worth. And then I'm going to look down at my hands and then look at my bracer. And I'm going to make a dagger appear and fling it at Giant on the left. I'll call him Lefty. Four out of 23. That will hit. It is five points. I'm going to... Of magical damage? It's magical, yes. I'm going to try one more time with a three on the die. No, sir. Yeah. And did it get its attention? Did it it pop me out? Yeah, that would have popped you out of stealth unless you chose to use your bonus action to hide. I look around for a place to hide and I I don't... I don't... I don't know. I don't think that's a good spot. I just kind of stand there a little discombobulated, like, and I'm done with my turn. Okay. okay. Did you add your sneak attack in? Oh. Because you would have gotten it, because you that's... technically were at advantage because you were stealthed. Right. Thank you. Ten. Good for you. Thank you. Ten, ten additional Somebody... points. Ten additional, yes. (laughs) All righty. Excellent. Most excellent. Okay. So, yeah, you you pop out and you bring forth these two magical daggers from your bracer, flinging them at one of the stone golems. And yes, these two magical daggers hit deep into the stone of the creature's shoulder. It doesn't really make a noise, but you do see the reaction of like the shoulder going back and the head where it had been looking at Gaz swivels over to you. The threat that had not been there previously, or at least it hadn't noticed previously, but is now very aware of. Is that all for your turn? Yes. Okay. So then we will roll right around to Poppy. Hi, I'm slow, but my mom says that I'm great. I'm going to uh, stay back where I am because I can only move like five feet now because I'm also small. I'm small and slow, like a little sloth, the most adorable sloth. Mm -hmm. And it reminds me of the vision quest that I had weeks and weeks ago where I was in a dream and I was running and it didn't matter how far I ran, I wasn't getting anywhere. And it's like in those dreams where you feel like you're moving in slow motion, but the rest of the world is. And so it makes panic kind of flutter and bloom in her chest. And I take that panic and I channel it and I feel it head to toe and I'm going to call lightning. So I'm gonna go ahead and strike lefty. And so that's a deck saving throw, 16. Deck save, 16. So I'm hoping they're big and bulky and not very dexterous. Right, let's, let's see what I get here. So it'll pass with a 18. You will take half, so that'll be a 20 half to 10. Okay. of lightning damage. And I'll say, Zonimus, be careful, honey. You don't look quite as good as you used to. You look a little pale. And she gets to re-roll for the save, yes. right? Yes, sir. Yeah, oh, go yes. ahead and give me that re-roll to see if you save out of the slow. How does a 20 do me? That'll do you right good, Miss Poppy. You kind of shake off this magical effect of the intimidation of this golem. So that way you can do things normally. 
Yes. Now I'm just slow because I'm small. So then we will move on to Makran. Makran is slow, so what normally he could do as a bonus action, he can only use an action to do, and he's going to share his stone aegis with Zonimus, who he can now spot on the other end of the cave or a little bit farther down. So he will now have his uh, bludgeoning, piercing, slashing damage reduced by four points if he gets hit with anything. And I rolled a modified 14 on my wisdom save for the end of this round. Not enough. Still slow. Gaz, you're up. Gaz feels like he is stuck in molasses and does not know what's going on. And this is not fun. I will bonus action rage and a tail comes slowly out from underneath my kilt and I say, I can't seem to do anything else. And that, that's uh, apparently all I can do. I'm, am I still in the middle? They're not actually adjacent to me at all, are they? They basically are. They're pretty large creatures. So each one only has about a five foot square before they reach you. Oh, good, good, good. Okay. May I retcon ask if I can see like a tunnel or, or an exit or anything at the other end? Yes, I will allow it. There is not. <laughs> okay. So this is a dead end room. I will allow it because there is none. All right. <laughs> Ten. Ten. So, nope, sorry, still, you are I'm still, still slow. <laughs> don't worry, friend, Gaz. Kana! Ugh, I don't like this feeling. How far apart are they from each other? From each other, only about 10 feet, but you've got Gaz literally right in the middle of it. Okay, so I'm going to do my super fancy careful spell for my sorcery point. Well... So that way Gaz can automatically save out of this. Well, so... Is that a bonus action to activate your sorcery points? Oh, yes. Never mind. Okay. Confusion is a concentration. So if I see it doesn't work, I can drop it. Right. And so then Gaz wouldn't be affected by it. Yeah. Okay. So what do I have to roll? So I need a wisdom saving throw of 16. 16. For the DC. Yeah. Eight. Me, Connor, and Mokrin have the same spell save DC. We're yep. twins. <laughs> Triplet. So one golem got a 19. The other okay. got a 16. So yeah, both of the golems Ironically, save. Gaz is the only one that failed. <laughs> so I guess on my next round, I'll drop it. Connor sees that it doesn't work on the golems and that it worked <laughs> on Gaz, and I whistle uh, 10 feet back. <laughs> I don't know what happened. And would you like to give me a wisdom save to see if you... Yes, please. Uh, oh, uh, that's a five. <laughs> a five. <laughs> nope, you are still affected by the slow. That brings us back to my golems. Let's roll to see if their ability recharges. Please no. Well, I got good news and bad news, kids. One of them didn't, one of them didn't. Exactly. So the one that got its ability back is now going to target. Yeah, Zonimus and Poppy, you are both within its target range. So it will target the two of you. I need wisdom saving throws, por favor. Fine, I got a dirty 20. All right, you save. I got a dirty 20, 19 on the die. There you both go. You done did good. Way to go, guys. <laughs> good job. All right, well, yes. Seeing as you have been slowed, Golem the second, who did not get its slow ability back, hefts over the big sledgehammer that it has, and it is going to try to hit you twice. The first hit will be a 19. The second will be a 28. All right. Yeah, both those hit. So it would be 20 points of bludgeoning damage for the first attack. This is also considered magical bludgeoning damage, if that makes any difference. I don't think it does, but just in case. Uh, then I will roll for damage for the second. So that's reduced to 10? Yes, would have been reduced to 10. Gotcha. The second attack would be 14 points of damage, reduced to seven. Fabulous, thank you. So it brings this massive sledgehammer, just whack you. Two hits, one high, one low.
Greetings and salutations, my friends. I'm Michael Cross. So great to have a moment to talk with you during this mid-show break. First off, I want to invite you all to join us as Patreon members. The money we raise helps us pay for things like music and sound effects you hear on the show, as well as money to go to events and make new fans. When you become a Patreon member, you get our episodes four days early, bonus content, access to our Discord server, and full versions of our roundtable discussions. You'll be joining other fans like Scott Wise, Don Mills, Heath Mormon, and the Lady Kate. So join us right now at patreon.com slash reddirtdnd. Another way to support us is by getting your very own Red Dirt merchandise. You can find things like hats, hoodies, mugs, and t-shirts. Just click on the merch tab at reddirtdnd.com or reddirtrpg.com. Since 2020, the Red Dirt D&D podcast has been close to another Oklahoma actual play Dungeons & Dragons podcast, D20 to Curtain. And me personally, I've had a chance to work on stage with some of the actors on the show. So when you get done with this episode, you should check them out. Hello, fellow D&Ders. My name is Jerome. I'm Jennifer. I'm Jody. And together with our friends Kara, Timothy, and Jared, we are the cast of the D20 to Curtain podcast, where Oklahoma theater geeks and their friends hit record and explore our new addiction to Dungeons & Dragons. We think D&D is more than just a game. It helps us tap into the enduring power of storytelling. We combine live gameplay with behind-the-curtain episodes to share our experiences, insights, habits, discoveries, and passion for D&D with anyone who will listen. We hope D20 to Curtain will make you laugh, cry, maybe even make your experience at your table even more satisfying. Check us out anywhere you listen to podcasts or visit us at d20tocurtain.com or at d 20 to Curtain on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We look forward to having you. All we ask is that you have fun, be kind, and play the role. If you're looking for more content, make sure to check out our YouTube page with Mysteries of Beatrix live every Wednesday, Keys from the Golden Vault from the Red Dirt Outlaws dropping every Tuesday at noon, and Plausible Deniability every other Thursday at 7 p.m. So come check it out at youtube.com slash at Red Dirt RPG or search for Red Dirt RPG on YouTube. And we would love to hear from you. Find us on social media at Red Dirt RPG. You can also get in touch with us through our website at reddirtrpg.com. In the meantime, make sure and subscribe to this podcast and leave a comment on your favorite podcatcher so others can find us. All right, I think that's everything I need to tell you. Right now, let's head back to Red Dirt D&D. You have just watched Gaz take two pretty hefty hits from this second stone golem. What would you like to do? This one is not lefty, is he? No, this is not lefty. This is righty. Does that hammer have reach or did it step up to Gaz? Oh, it's like pretty much right up on Gaz. Okay. I'm going to maneuver back a bit towards Mokrin and... First off, I'm brushing at my skin when it, as it starts tingling, like there's something wrong. And I look over and I see Makarin wrapping up his spell. And I'll start walking over to Makarin and patting my pockets. I'll pull up my deck of cards when I get to him and I'll turn to the golem. And I'll reach in the pack and pull them out. And I can't keep my grip on them. They just waterfall cascade out from my fingers onto the ground. And I close my eyes and grit my teeth and just scream as I fling my arm out. And all at once, the bracer activates. There's a dagger in it. And I throw it at the golem that's on gas for 19. Will hit. And that is 12. All together? Okay. And that is considered magical damage, correct? Yes. And I look back down at the pile of cards at Mokrin's feet, and I turn and I look at Mokrin and kind of stumble into him. Like, if he wasn't there, I would have hit the ground. And that's my turn. 
Okay. Poppy. Anonymous darling, I know you think you're you're not, you're just not acting like you're quite right. I just, maybe you should be careful and stay in the back. I'm concerned about you. I'm going to go ahead and bonus action, call my lightning on lefty. So it's another deck save throw. That will be a 17. Okay, so he will take half, so 31 goes down to 15. And how far away am I from the golems and gas? You're about 10 feet away from Gaz, but only about five feet away from Lefty. These are large creatures, so they have quite a bit of room. Oh yeah. And then how far are the boys behind me? Zonovus and Mokrin are pretty much like right there with Okay, me. so I'm in the middle of the hubbub. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. But since I'm standing right here next to Lefty, I'm going to go ahead and pull my Gideon sword and look over at Zonovus, pale, his eyes probably like, I imagine them like a little bloodshot, maybe even like almost like jaundiced, a little yellow. Something is obviously wrong with this man and I don't have time to heal him right now. Now, and I gotta make time, so I gotta take care of these golems. Zonimus, I already done lost one father figure. I don't need to lose the other, and I'm going to attempt to stab him. It will require you to move five feet up to him. That's fine by me. I got five feet of movement. I'm small, but not that small. Okay, let's see if I can hit him. That's only a 19. Only a 19. That'll hit. It's a really nice sword. I have a plus nine to hit on that sword. <laughs> and so that'll be seven slicing damage. That's a plus two weapon. But it is a plus two weapon. Yeah, so it's magical. It's magic. Magic. All right. Shipping away at him very slowly, but surely. A pebble falls off his ankle and I'm very proud of myself. <laughs> all right. Is that all for you, Poppy? <laughs> yes, that is my turn. Okay. Makran, you're up. Zani, you... Okay, we need to get out of here. And I'm going to use my action to pull Zani back toward the exit of the room if he's coming along. Again, because of the slow, you can only move at half speed. So your speed is what, normally 25? 25. So we'll say you move about 10 feet just for sake of nice round numbers. Sounds good. Zonimus, are you stumbling along with me as we pull back, or do you start to, like, hold your I'm ground? I'm resistant. Okay. And I, and you don't know if it's because I don't want to be taken out of the fight, or it's because I don't trust you. Gotcha. Ouch. Yes. And you can still, you still technically can take an action. It's just you can only take either an action or a bonus action. You can't do both. Oh, very good. Then as my action, then he is going to swirl a chromatic orb and throw that at a second level attempt. At righty or lefty? At lefty with a 12? Lefty with a 12. No, my good sir. I'm trying to hang on to him and throw the orb at the same time. It... Yeah, you get the trajectory off wrong and it just lands like two feet off of where you intended. Sizzles some stone on the wall. Mokrin, be careful. I like this jacket. I'm sorry, Bobby. And then you can attempt to save out of the slow. I rolled an 11. Sad face. Gaz, you're up. Do I roll a D10 or a D8? D10. Roll high. <laughs> Nine. Okay, good. The creature can act and move normally. <laughs> So my long sword, we will go ahead and attack with that. 22 to hit. 22 to hit, and I'm assuming on the left one? Correct. 14 points of damage. And unfortunately, because I'm slowed, that is only one attack I can make and no bonus action or anything like that. But we will try to get out of the slow with an 11. Uh, no. Do I have to roll to get out of the confusion too? Yeah. With a 10. Nope. <laughs> so, I am still slow and confused. It's okay, guys. Remember back in the early episodes when Poppy was just saving the day all the time? Back to that. Right. It's fine. I'll take these guys down. As long as I can hit them at least once, I'll be happy. All right, Connor. Is it an action to drop a spell? No. Is it a bonus action or can it, it's just like instant? No. It's just... I'm going to drop confusion because that didn't work. <laughs> Sorry, guys. And then I'm going to move up only about like five feet to be right in front of Mokrin and Zonimus. 
as they're trying to get out. And how big is this room again? About 30 feet wide by about 40 feet at its longest point. Okay. So I want to angle this to where it's a 20 foot radius. I'm doing storm sphere. Good old tried and true. But this time to where nobody's in it. <laughs> so I don't know if... <laughs> Okay. Yeah, with with the way that everyone's positioned, mm-hmm. you really won't be able to do this the storm sphere without hitting anybody. Um, even with there being large creatures and taking up ten feet. Okay. Yeah, even with. Yeah, if we could not have Poppy's own party hurt her right now, she only has thirty three hit points. I'm going to hurl this ball of warbling chaotic energy and throw a chaos bolt at the right one. Roll doubles, and then you can hit them both. It's only a 14 to hit. Nope. With a 14, again, just falls slightly short. Okay. Well, I tried, guys. Now my wisdom save. I was say, yeah, now you can try to save out of it and see what happens. Five. <laughs> nope. I do not have the wisdom saves. All right. It's my golem's turn. So let's see if they regain any abilities this turn. That is a nope on both accounts. So they are just going with their physical attacks. Poppy, the one that you shanked its ankles, it is going to swing twice against you with its big old sledgehammer. Poppy, get down! That will be 15 on both attacks. I missed. Got shield. All right. So yes, this thing swings twice, misses wildly both times because you're such a small surface area. I'm dipping, I'm dodging. All right. Well, Gaz, let's see if the other one manages to get you. Okay. One will be a 22. The other will be a 27. Be careful, Gaz. You gotta dodge. You can't just let them hit you. I'm trying. So the first damage will be 25. Reduced to 12. And then the second one will be 19. Reduced to 8. No, 9. Yes. Thank you. You are welcome, sir. All right. And that is it for my golems for this turn. So we will roll around to Zonimus. How you feeling back there, buddy? When Poppy starts yelling at me, I look at her kind of like, why is she yelling at me? Then I look down and realize that Mokrin has my arms been pulling me back and I pulled away from him. I look at him like, why are you doing this to me? And as his hand starts moving around and glowing, Mokrin's does as he goes to cast that spell. I just bend down and duck down and turn away as I see it fly over my head and go, are Gaz and Poppy both on Lefty? Well, Gaz is basically between the two of the golems, but Poppy is fighting directly left. Okay. So I turn and I look and I see this orb fly over me and go nowhere. And I'll turn around and look at Mokrin and reach down and pull out two daggers as I turn and start walking up between Gaz and Poppy. And I get between them and I look over at Poppy and I nod and I look over at Gaz and I see him up close and I'm kind of shocked like, oh, it's Gaz. And then I will turn around and strike Lefty. This is a 17. 16 points. It was a 17 to hit, sorry. Yes, sorry, 17. That will hit. And because I did a whole lot there, that's my turn. Poppy, you're up. Okay, we're gonna call lightning on Lefty with my bonus action. Dex save. Ooh, he actually fails for once. Ooh, he take full damage. Ooh, and I rolled good, 29. That's my call lightning damage. And then I'm going to stab him in the ankle again. I'm going to attempt to. Let's see if I can hit. Probably not. That's an 11. No. The 11 will not It kind of just shinks down the side of his stony ankle. I call the lightning. I'm going to stab. And Zon, this is approximately time Zonimus comes up. And he's doing stuff. I'm... I thought I told you to stay in the back. You're not okay. Something is not wrong. Zonimus. It seems to me that he might not be all here mentally. There's something going on inside his head cavity where his brain lives. Yeah, so I would say, just for everyone's reference, that the golem known as Lefty seems to have sustained enough damage that if it were to have blood, one would consider it bloodied. It's gravelly. Okay, and we just finished up with Poppy's turn, so that would bring us to Makran. All right. Gunner, I don't think 
the Donna must is feeling right. Something's wrong. We gotta get out of here. I'll try some cover. And he again begins to swirl chromatic orb and roll a cheese and crackers. Come on. 12. Poor Mockery. There's something about that slow. You're taking it a little longer to form that swirling orb of energy than what you would usually do and hefting it back. You know, you're not getting that same exact flick of the wrist to let that energy go. And so it's just fizzling out before it hits the intended target. Oh, but I get to make a save. <gasps> Yay! I modified 19 on my wisdom save. I figured it out. I'm like, ah, I'm back, guys. Good for you, Macron. All right, Gaz, you're up. Uh, gonna attack again with my long sword. Uh, 18 plus. We'll hit. Four. Another 14 points of damage to Lefty. Excellent. And that's it for that one. So let's get this wisdom save going. Nat 20. Yeah! Barbarian is back, baby. You realize, of course, this means it's going to get its ability back next round. Yeah. But yes, at least I am no longer slowed. Not if we kill it first. But that means I do have reaction, correct? Yes. At least first right now. Go ahead. Okay. Well, Connor, let's see if we can keep this wisdom train going. Right. Makrin, how about you be the one to get Zonimus out of here? I'll do my best. And this time, remembering I have a certain thing, unlike last time, I'm going to throw out another Chaos Bolt at second level. I have pack tactics. Guess what I didn't remember last time? <laughs> so let's see if I can do something for once. <laughs> They're not other kobolds, so like you didn't think about it for a minute. No, like, oh wait, I am friends with these people. <laughs> We're your pack. <laughs> we are friends, even Gaz. It was Gaz that I was a little iffy on. That's what it is. <laughs> okay, let me see. Okay, so first one's still a 22. Let's see what the next one is. Okay, so we're taking the 22 and... Oh, I got doubles. Acid damage. Okay, so two points of acid. So two points. I do have to roll another d6 because I upcasted it. So a total of six points of damage. And then the next one, because I hit. Yeah, you have to make a second attack roll. Attack yeah. roll. But you still get pack tactics because this one's like literally right still next there. Right. So that one's only 11. Second one. It was a 10 and 11. So no. No dice. Well, lefty got hit somewhere. So that's good. So you need to save, Connor. Oh, yeah. Ooh, natural 20. Hey! Yeah! 21. We're all normal speed. Yay. We figured it out now. Well, friends, we find ourselves once again in a pickle at the end of an episode. It's weird how this happens so often. You've got gas and Zonimus kind of trapped between two rocks that are both hard places. But fortunately, Poppy is, is right up there next to him. So there is hope with Makron and Connor maybe attempting to take a tactical retreat. Unfortunately, we're going to have to see how this ends next time. Red Dirt, D&D, Tales from the Caliban Frontier, as Ash King, as our Dungeon Master, Brooke Bullock, as Mokran Stone Shaper, Johnny Payne, as Zonimus Dinar, Kiri Hester, as Poppy Tealeaf, Connor Chenold, as Connor the Kobold, and I'm Michael Cross, as Gaz. Special thanks to our Silver Star Paladin patron, Shenanigans Unplugged. Our theme music was created by the Cinemagician, P.J. Castillo. Our incidental music comes from Jeffrey McBride, our sound effects and additional music, courtesy of TabletopAudio.com and Monument Studios. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and at RedDirtDnd.com. We here at Red Dirt D&D could really use your help in getting the word out about us. If you like what you've heard, make sure and subscribe, rate us, and leave a comment. Also, tell your friends about Red Dirt D&D. You can also support the show at Patreon.com slash Red Dirt d and We have several giving levels to help us grow up big and strong. Join us next time as we go deeper into the Caliban frontier. This is going to be interesting because...
we're doing this on Zoom, so I got to figure out how I'm recording everyone's initiative. I usually draw a box that represents the table, and just doing a box that represents the Zoom. <laughs> it represents the Zoom. So okay, so I'm on top. So that's me. Uh, <laughs> Johnny, what's your dex? You're muted. Hi there. Wait, yes, no, <laughs> come back. <laughs> Zonimus, you are currently the only person who's not slowed. Okay. You're like the flash. You can move so fast because <laughs> we're all slow. And I'm going to call lightning in this little room. It's just going to be Connor made a storm in the office. By the time you guys are done in this mine, it's just going to be completely flooded. It really so, is. But it's going to be clean. It's going to be so clean. <laughs> Not a nat 20, a dirty 20. But I mean, the druid failing the wisdom saving throw. That's just. <laughs> that's just sad. With a plus <laughs> nine to the wit. Ashamed. I'm going to try and not do this the whole game. Ash, did you get my message? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Carry on. I love technology. I'm passing digital notes. I'm like <laughs> Mockrin and Connor. I can't seem to do anything else. Back to you guys. That's fantastic. I just love how he's he's gone suddenly from Captain Cheerio to Captain Prunes. Yeah, I was gonna say he turned into an old man, but I am here for it. Captain Raisin Bran. I guess those Cheerios don't stay crunchy in milk. <laughs> I'm now Captain Grape Nuts. <laughs> it's, it's a good day when the barbarian is slowed. Cause... Right. The problem with <laughs> those throw wisdom spells to barbarian, you'll usually succeed. But you've got Gaz literally right in the middle of it. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Well, <laughs> never stopped you before. It really hasn't because I have a thing. <laughs> it's fine. He was already in the same similar situation. Anyway. He's already confused because he's slow. He's yeah. <laughs> What's happening to me? We just won't talk about this. No, we tell Gaz what happened. I really want him to fail his save and do damage to self. Like pull yourself out of it. <laughs> oh, uh, that's a five. <laughs> This is my no, karmatic you- retribution. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, I can't use my reaction to, I would have used my reaction to block that first attack. Yeah. There's like two reasons why you couldn't have done that. Gaz <laughs> shouts at his tail. What are you doing? You're supposed you're, to block. You're just so flaccid laying there. <laughs> One of those reasons is the slow and the other reason is Connor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean confusion. And I'm going to attempt to stab him. Not Zonimus Lefty. I'm going to attempt to stab Lefty. <laughs> About 10 feet, 12 feet. Yeah, we're, we're going to pop that down because that would be what? Like 12 and a half? <laughs> <laughs> Something ridiculous. That, yeah, no. Half, half doesn't work when it's not 30. It really doesn't. It doesn't. It says I can act and move normally. Yeah. <laughs> There's a rules lawyer right there. Is that act and move normally still affected by the slow? Yes. What do you think, Michael? <laughs> hey, I'm just trying to find a loophole here. Hey, if you don't ask, you don't know. The right one smacks gas with a hammer and gas says, You wait a minute, I'm fighting your brother. I'll be with you in a moment, young man. <laughs> Gaz, your mind clears in a way you weren't sure it was clouded before. Nobody tell Gaz. <laughs> it was just a weird effect of those golems, right? Right. Yeah, it was just so weird. I felt a little bit of it, too. Yeah, if we could not have Poppy's own party hurt her right now, she only has 33 hit points. Okay. I can take it from the golems. I can't take it from you, Connor. It hurts her heart as much <laughs> as her body. <laughs> I miss. I got shield. I am now picturing the uh, fight between Sir Didymus and the giant gate goblin in, in Labyrinth as the gate golem just like swings the axe down and Sir Didymus is just popping like all over the place. It's great. Adorable little cat dog man. Fox. Okay, so if I'm the little fox man, then does that make Gaz Ludo? Ludo. 
<laughs> Smell bad. And Connor is fizz gig. Show a friend. Lefty's thinking to himself, why are they just hitting me? That guy right there. <laughs> the golems burst into song and dance. It's about drive. It's about power. We stay hungry. We devour. <laughs> Put in the work, put in the app. I do like the narrative that we see Zonimus run back in there. And then that seems to be the trigger for the rest of us making our saves. Like, it's really nice. That was cool. That was pretty cool. 